In this video, we look at how to generate mazes procedurally using the recursive backtracker algorithm. We will be writing Unity independent C# -sharp code to generate the maze. So let's get started. Welcome to Game Dev with Sandeep. If you like the video, consider subscribing. So, what is a maze? If you think of your map as a grid of nodes, then a maze is essentially making a set of paths such that each node is connected to another by at least one path. If you place walls between the nodes that aren't connected, voila, you have a maze. There are quite a few maze generation algorithms, but we will be using the recursive backtracker. Here's how it works. Choose a random current node shown here by the red cube and add its position to the stack. Select one of its unvisited neighbors and break the walls between them. Move the current node to the new position, add it to the stack and repeat the process till we reach a dead end. Once at a dead end, we backtrack through the visited nodes by removing elements from the stack, trying to find a node with non-zero unvisited neighbors. Once found, we repeat the process till there are no more elements in the stack. At that point, the maze is complete. Let's look at the code now. Let's start by creating a scripts folder in our project that will hold all our scripts. And let's create a maze generator script first. Now in our maze generator file, we first need to describe what each node is. We could define a node as maybe a struct that holds values like bool, uh, left wall, public bool, right wall, and so on. But instead, what we could do is use a flagged enum. For our purpose, let's define a flagged enum, where each bit in the bit representation denotes whether a node still has a wall or not. Let's give it a more descriptive name, something like wall state. And when I mean each bit, so something like 000 would mean no walls in that particular cell. And uh, all ones would mean left, right, up, down. All the walls in that cell are still standing. So to define this, we can just go left is 1, which means 0, 0, 0, 1 in bit representation. Right is 2, again 0, 0, 1, 0. So each of the bits, as I said. Up is 3, so 0, 1, 0, 0. And down is 4, so the first bit. Yeah. Now to use it as a uh, as a flag, what you need to do is you need to add a flags attribute. And now this can be used as a flag. What this means essentially is you can do things like wall state is a dot left. And if you do the pipe operator, that applies wall state dot right. And if you do this, this essentially means 0011. You can add more state to this by just doing pipe equal to uh, pipe equal to wall state dot up. This makes it uh, triple one. And to remove a particular flag, you would do wall state um, tilde equal to sorry and equal to tilde wall state dot right and this would make our the bits essentially 0 1 0 1 so each of the cells each of the nodes in our map can be represented using uh, this enum so let's first convert this class into a static class and remove the mono behavior we will be returning a public static we will be creating a public static um, wall state two dimensional array and we'll call this function generate and this will return a the maze right 
So what this would need is say int width and int height. Uh, we'll also give it the seed later, but for now, let's just use a, a random seed and let's actually complete this. We'll give it width and height and then let's return the maze. So that will complete our initial implementation of our maze generator. It returns nothing essentially. Um, it's an empty maze, nothing has been done to it. But what we could do is actually fill it up properly. So int i equal to zero and i would be less than width and i plus plus. Let's create another one and j equal to zero, j less than height, um, plus, plus j. And then we would go maze i comma j is we want all the walls to be standing in the in, in the initial each of the cells right initially so what you could do is wall state dot right type wall state dot left type wall state dot up and wall state dot down we should move this out into a different variable out here wall state initial is this and this is assign this here. Right. So that should set it up and what this will do is create a bunch of cells in the 2D array maze where all of the values, essentially all the values of the bits are going to be one, 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 one. Right. And then we can use this with something like uh, a has flag check. So you can do this and you can check wall state dot right and you can check stuff like this. This returns a bool and you can do stuff like this to like actually initialize and instantiate the wall prefabs on the mono behavior side, right? So let's uh, do that now. So let's head back to Unity and uh, create a new script. Let's call it maze renderer. We have a generator and now we have a renderer as well. And let's create an empty object that will hold this. Let's call this maze renderer as well. And give this, add this component here. And what will our maze renderer need? It will need a wall. We need a wall that will render everywhere, right? Um, so let's create an empty 3D object. Let's create a cube. Uh, let's rename this to wall and let's just decrease the z size of this so this is what it looks like from the top and let's create a new prefabs folder and we'll drag our wall not the maze render the wall into the prefabs folder and let's just delete that We'll also move the camera up so that it's, let's see what it looks like. If the wall's there, the camera should be looking down at it. So let's move this up then, bring this to zero and let's rotate this by 90 so that it, the camera is looking down. As you can see on the game scene, you can see that one wall. Uh, we'll probably need to move this a little further up so that it can see the whole maze when it's rendered, but uh, we'll get to that eventually. Um, okay, so the wall is already ready. The camera is properly set up as well. Let's go to our maze renderer class and set it up so that it accepts the um, maze generated by the maze generator class and then draws it. Now in our maze renderer class, let's first set up variables which will uh, control how big our maze is. So we'll serialize this field because we don't want to expose this private in, or oh, let's make it a uint so that it doesn't go below zero. Um, width and serialize field private uint height. Right, we can't have negative values for these. So these two will define how big our maze is. And then let's just initialize these with say 10 and 10. And then what we can do is essentially get the maze from the maze generator. 
dot generate and we just pass in the width and the height and we can call a draw function which accepts the maze and the width it doesn't need the width and the height does it um, so it's essentially private void draw and what it will get is a wall state array and it just needs to draw this right that's the problem here oh right um, our maze generator needs ints and our maze renderer gives it um, uint so let's just fix that as well we'll uh, be careful not to pass in negative values I guess we could also like set up range values so that it never um, goes below zero so we could do range um, 1 to say 50 and range 1 to 50 here as well um, and that'll that'll set up a basic basic draw function what we need to do next is maybe call draw instead of calling it on start we could maybe call it on on validate so that it draws every time we change the values but we'll get to that as well um next thing we need to do actually is to uh, actually link the uh, wall prefab we created so that we know what to instantiate let's keep this to null so that unity doesn't complain about this being never in initialized let's clear all of that um, um we need to give it the wall prefab so where is it let's drag that in we'll head back to our maze renderer class and fill in this draw function so given this maze we just need to iterate over the all the cells of the maze right so we'll go i is less than width i plus plus and we'll go j equal to zero j less than height uh, plus plus j and we'll say cell is uh, maze is i comma j right and for what we need to figure out is if we need to set the position of the cell um given the width and the height would be um Our position is essentially a new vector 3 um, minus width by 2 plus i 0 minus height by 2 plus j what we're doing here essentially is that the that the position of each cell is now offset from the center by width by 2 so that the middle of the maze actually sits as exactly at zero zero so now that we have the position we can check if each of the walls exist right so if uh, cell dot has flag wall state dot say up we can place the top wall right so we'll go top wall is instantiate the uh, wall prefab let's give it the transform so that it becomes the child of the maze renderer and then the top wall needs to be offset from position um, well, let's make this as transform and top wall needs to be offset from uh, the current the cell center by exactly um, position plus new vector 3 so zero in the x-axis zero in the y-axis but uh, 0 0.5 in the z-axis so it's moved up right um this 0 0.5 is actually the size of the of the prefab itself so we could use the local scale of the prefab or we could actually expose a size variable which says how big is our uh, each cell in the node so let's set this to 0 0.5 we'll also serialize this and then we can just do size right 
and I think something has to be done here as well but maybe we'll get to that later um, we also need to set its uh, local scale so that it matches the size that we defined in terms of uh, so we need to reuse it, its thickness needs to remain the same because we set that as uh, 0 0.1 in the prefab right but its x value its actual size along the x-axis should be the same as the size of the cell so that it completely becomes a wall of the whole cell so this is going to be size and actually size is oh right 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 size is the size of the whole cell so let's make that one and this is going to be half of the size you want to move the wall halfway because from the center the top wall's position is halfway up so the local scale would be size comma zero comma sorry no uh, one or actually top wall dot local scale dot y and top wall dot local scale dot z so we're just changing the x so that the walls width increases right let's check it let's check if it the cell has a a left wall no wall state dot left um war left wall is maybe instantiated as transform and then similar to the top wall we're going to set the left wall's position to be position plus uh, an offset essentially where it's going to be minus size by two because it needs to move to the left by exactly half of the size of the box and zero comma zero now if you remember our prefab was set up rotated uh, to be along the x-axis but the left wall has to be rotated 90 degrees as well so let's do that by just uh, setting the Euler angles right we're just going to say vector 3 this is 0 comma rotated 90 degrees on the y-axis and 0 all right we have two walls um, so not all cells need to draw all their walls if we just draw the up and the left walls most of the cells will be covered you can actually see that let's go check it out right now so if we let this run the size is set equal to 1 and we set the width to be say 10 and this is also 10 if we click on play right now this should create a nice little grid structure this is all the cells is all the box so the first cell here say this is actually the last cell so this cells right and bottom walls are drawn by the adjacent cells right so we don't, we don't need to draw all the all the walls but we need to draw them for the this this row and this column so we'll only draw them if if we are on the on the last column so that's i equal equal to with minus one right so this essentially says that we are in the last column then we can just do all the other checks as flag in case one of our outer walls don't you know don't need to exist we don't know how the maze is going to generate this right so we'll say if we're on the last column we'll check if the cell has a right wall and then we just need to do all of the things that the left wall did right so let's uh, rename this right wall and right wall position is the opposite of the left wall so it has to be offset in the positive direction by size by two this also has to be rotated and of course the scaling has to be done for all of them so we'll just add this left wall add this for the right wall as well all right uh left wall left wall sorry right wall right wall right now we also need to check if it's the first row so if 
j is equal equal to 0 we will do the same calculations again so if uh, cell has flag wall state dot um, down right the down wall was missing there um, let's just copy the top wall code here and we'll just uh, replace this with bottom wall instantiate in this as just like the other walls the offset has to be in the negative minus size by two right it has to go down and the scale is the same logic for the scale right now this should render all the faces that we are looking for if you do this now there you go it actually generates a full grid of all the walls so our render is just working perfectly if we remove if we change the bit flag of one of these cells the wall should automatically not render right the thing we have to watch out for is that if we remove say for example if we're on this cell and we remove the right wall we also have to come to this cell and remove the left wall now coming back to the maze generator class i actually realized i made a big mistake here the enums need to be four and eight that's what the bit representations mean um three is not uh, three is not zero one zero zero so anyway for the recursive back tracker we need to add another enum to this which is essentially uh visited we gonna set this to 128 which would be the first bit in uh, 8 bit representation right so it, it, it won't interfere with our walls at all and it's gonna sit far away right here okay so we're gonna use this to mark a particular cell as vis visited for um, the recursive back tracker the other thing that we need to do is add a public uh, struct position which is uh, nothing but an xy coordinate for us to keep track of which um, coordinate we are in the maze while we're generating it and as i mentioned earlier when we are breaking a wall or removing a wall between two nodes when you're drawing a line between two nodes uh, we need information about which wall we are breaking right so we'll use a, another struct called uh, wall break to hold that information it's essentially going to contain the um, position of the neighbor we are breaking the wall with and it's also going to con uh, have the wall that we are sharing with the neighbor uh, let's call this shared wall so from the nodes perspective which wall is shared with the neighbor which is described by this position let's actually rename this to neighbor so that this makes more sense and we'll call this position so the neighbor struct essentially contains the position of the neighbor and the shared wall from a particular cell the next thing we need to define here is um, we need to define a function that returns all the neighbors at a given position that are unvisited so how we're going to do that is essentially iterate over all the directions check if that neighbor is visited has the flag visited or not and then return add it to a list and just return that list so we're going to be using a static function again which is uh, going to return a list of neighbors and it's going to be get neighbors uh, let's be more descriptive get unvisited neighbors and we're going to need a position p and uh, the whole maze right to check through and the height and width of the maze we don't want to be checking out of bounds so we'll need that information so let's create a list new list neighbor and return that list we'll fill that list up in the middle here um, the first check we need to do is if 
p dot x is uh, greater than zero, which is I mean you're checking to the left, right? So you need to make sure that you can subtract this properly. Uh, we'll say if maze um, p dot x minus one and p dot y dot has flag wall state dot visited. Actually, we need to check if it doesn't have the flag. If it doesn't have the flag, we'll add it to the list, right? A uh, new neighbor um, at position is p dot x um, new position x is uh, p dot x minus one and y is p dot y and shared wall shared wall would be the left wall now we need to repeat this for all the directions so let's just copy this whole thing we'll check for y as well if p dot y is greater than zero which means uh the bottom walls right so we we'll let p dot x be x and p dot y minus one if it's not visited let this be we will subtract minus one here and the shared wall is towards the bottom so you check to the oh it's not bottom sorry it's uh, down right so it's down we need to do something similar for the uh, other edges so if p dot y is less than with minus one uh, sorry height minus one this would check the up wall so we can do p dot y plus one is not visited then the position is p dot plus one and this is up and let's just copy all of this paste that and if p dot x is less than width minus one so this is right wall um let's just do this here remove this and plus one and this is for the right wall so this should return a list of all the neighbors that were unvisited by in the maze still so let's start setting up our recursive backtracker algorithm um it's going to return a maze right uh, let's call it apply recursive backtracker it's going to accept a maze and it's going to accept a width and a height um, and it's, it's going to return the maze so here we make changes the first step in the recursive backtracker is to choose a random position um, to choose a random position we need a random number generator so we'll use the system random function system random class sorry system dot random we can pass in a seed here right but uh, we'll do that later when we're ready for it and to choose a random position we can just do new position x would be um, rng dot next zero comma width so that will give us a random position from zero to width and y would be rng dot next zero comma height so we have a random uh, position inside the whole grid and we need to mark this position in the maze as visited so let's do that um, maze position dot x and position dot y is now marked as uh, all state dot visited this essentially makes it such that whatever the position was which it is essentially initially uh, all ones is going to be zero one triple zeros and then one 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 right so that's going to be setting the initial uh, cell as visited uh, we also need to push this position to a stack so we're going to say position stack is new stack of positions right and then let's just do position stack dot push position 
The next step in the recursive backtracker is to iterate over uh, the position stack till it becomes empty. So we'll do uh, position stack dot count is greater than zero. And then um, we need to pop the top of the stack. So position stack dot pop. Uh, initially, it will just give us back the initial uh, random position. Um, we then look for the neighbors of the current position. So we can just do get unvisited neighbors at uh, current position, take the maze, width and height, right? And if the neighbors dot count is greater than zero, then we have things to do around the, we, we have not reached dead end yet. So uh, there is still unvisited neighbors around this. So we put the current uh, position back into the stack. So we do position stack dot push current. Uh, and then we need to find a random neighbor around the current position. How we can do that is just to take a random index of all the neighbors, like random index from the neighbors list. So we do rng dot next zero comma neighbors dot count. Right, that will give us a random index from zero to neighbors dot count minus one. And then the random neighbor is essentially neighbors random at the random index value. So we have a random neighbor. The position of the neighbor, let's call it n position, is random neighbor dot position because uh, neighbors have a position and a shared wall, right? What we can do is first remove the shared wall between them. So maze.current.x and current.y. Uh, the way to remove the maze I mentioned earlier is to do and equal to and uh, random neighbor dot uh, shared wall. That will remove the shared wall on the um, on the current node. We also need to add a function that uh, returns the opposite side of the shared wall. So if it says it's a right wall for me, it needs to return a function. Let's create a function that returns the opposite side. So if uh, it takes a wall state and returns a get opposite wall, and it takes a wall state and returns the opposite side. So it's going to be switch wall case wall state dot uh, right it needs to return wall state dot left case wall state dot uh, left it needs to return wall state dot right um, I'm sure there are some bit riddling ways to do this but I just want to keep this simple it's just a little extra writing compared to the bit riddling case <laughs> and default is going to be return wall state dot uh, I'm not sure uh, left doesn't matter because we're going to be passing one of these in so we need to set mazes at the neighbor's position right we need to remove the wall on that side as well so we're going to do remove get opposite wall of the shared wall on our side last but not the least we need to push the uh, neighbor's position onto the stack now that's your whole recursive backtracker algorithm essentially Start at the current node, find its neighbor, go to a random neighbor, remove the walls, push onto stack, repeat. Right? Now to call this function, we haven't yet called it. So let's head to the generate function. And before we return the maze, we'll just do, um, actually we can return the maze here. We can just do apply uh, apply recursive backtracker and we pass the maze along 
maze and it needs the width and the height right and that should generate a maze for us let's head over to unity and see how that looks we let it uh, compile for a second and then if you click on play right i found the problem uh we never marked the neighbor as visited so let's do that as well <laughs> position dot x and n position dot y is going to be marked as a uh, visitor um let's open up our scene there you go clicking on play and the maze is ready let's make our maze look a little bit nicer um so i'm going to create a few materials in the materials folder materials folder um let's call this the uh, wall material i'm going to set the value for this to be approximately this let's also create a floor material we don't have a floor yet but uh, i would love to add one should be around this green i like this green a lot and let's just make it completely smooth um let's create a plane that's going to be our floor and drag and drop this into the material set this to be zero 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 and uh, need to add it to the maze renderer so let's do that So if we have that, before we draw the whole maze, let's instantiate the floor. So floor is instantiate floor prefab inside the transform. And then let's just set the floor dot uh, local scale scale to be new uh, vector 3. We need to make it as big as the maze itself. So let's just make it a uh, um, width comma height zero comma height right along the x z axis, right? So that should increase the size of the of the floor itself. I need to create a prefab out of this. Uh, come on here, go to the maze renderer, give it the floor. Let's update the material for this. Let's call this wall material yeah and let's see how this looks okay something's wrong the problem we set its local scale to be zero so if we go back to unity now i think we should be able to see the floor and the maze in its full glory it's really bright though wow so I imported the standard assets and added a third person controller and a free look camera rig that keeps looking down at the third person controller. Um, so let's see how that goes. We have our player in the maze, we run around, we can set up exits. So where do you want to go? I'm going to go to the other corner. So the way you would go is right this way. I think I... I think I know the way. Let's go. <laughs> I should add something better for this controller. Uh, the maze looks easier from the top. Um, I think it's this way. And you are back at the corner. I can reach that corner as well. And there you go. So that's the maze generator for you. There are multiple game ideas we can make using this generator. We can make a simple maze running game going from one end to the other with global leaderboards for the best times. Or a game where you have to collect a few keys and find the exit. Let me know what game ideas you come up with 
and if you have any questions or suggestions drop a comment cheers hey can't the third person controller jump oh <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. Oh it's stuck, I guess. You got to do what you got to do. What?